Leaders don't create dependency. They give up control. Control. Let's break that next fallacy. Effective and strong leadership is nothing about control at all. If control is one of your drivers as a leader, then there is some deep reflection to be had. Control kills creativity, initiative, innovation and empowerment. Those leaders who talk about control often talk about high expectations, wanting excellence and tell stories of their staff's incompetence, failings and lack of skills. And these descriptions become the cover, the reasoning for the leader to then establish themselves as the micromanager. Micromanaging kills initiative, thinking, ownership, risk taking and growth. These leaders are sending messages to their team that their leader doesn't believe they have the skill base, that they are incompetent in some way and in turn the team become conditioned to doing nothing until their leader tells them. They do nothing until they are scaffolded into the last millimetre. They wait. And as a result, they appear lacking in skill and initiative, where in fact they are simply working in a way that they have been led to. Those who push control actually create a dependency on their leadership. And sadly, there are leaders who want this. They want to make all the decisions and actually push to develop compliant and quiet teams. In fact, these leaders often push to break down teams, to push people to work as individuals. These leaders will talk about teams, but actually push to work with the individual. This desire for control impacts on how the professional conduct and culture of your workplace and on your team will develop. You may find that behind the quiet, compli compliant public team is a very satis dissatisfied and disengaged and angry group of people. You have a team of where public and private faces are very different. They won't be open or honest with you. Some leaders often misread staff who question or seek assurance as not knowing, as being unskilled or lacking in ability. Or even worse, non-compliant and someone who needs to be controlled. After a training, these leaders feel like they have they have to review, to reteach, to rewrite and then go into the team's workspace to make it happen for them. This kills your team. Too much scaffolding can actually inhibit the team's ability to grow, to learn, their ability to work to their best. Similarly, when you hold the hands of your team and you are overly emotional, sharing their negative thinking, see things as a problem, and moan bond. They believe the work is too much, too hard, blame others and create a work environment that when something new is introduced, a change is made. It is seen as more work too hard and the moan bonding begins. Yes, we need to understand and we need to listen, but let us set the direction and build the capacity. The way your team works is a direct reflection on your leadership. Go back to our discussion earlier about delegation and look at those four levels of learning. How do you develop your people? How do you lead your people? Do you give them choice and ownership? Are they allowed to create, to make mistakes? Can they make decisions? Will they have a go? Are you their critic or their support and backstop? Do your team have the opportunity to learn from each other or are they reliant on you? If they are focused on you, then this is a concern for your leadership. Our teams want a sense of autonomy and some sense of control over their work. The control should actually be with your team and not you. They want to learn and to feel supported. But they also want to know you have their back and you're the biggest supporter. 
They want your direction and your encouragement. They want to be treated like the skilled people that they are. Don't underestimate them. Don't judge them. Give them new thinking and say, just do it. Have a go. Work it out. See where it goes. There is a saying. My teacher believed I was excellent. So I was. Do you believe in your team?